Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live webinar, High Sensitivity Purity Analysis of Adeno-Associated Virus, AAV, Capsid Proteins Using CESDS, presented by Ting Ting Li. I'm Christy Jewell of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by SciEx. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit SciEx.com. Now let's get started. Today's webinar is interactive, and we encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them in the Ask a Question box and click Send. We will answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Now, if you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window, or report your problem by using the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. This presentation is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I now present today's speaker, Ting Ting Li, Senior Biopharma Application Development Scientist at SciEx. Ting Ting, you may now begin your presentation. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction, Christy. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the purity analysis of adeno-associated virus capsid viral proteins using CESDS technology in cell and gene therapy industry. Gene therapy is an experimental treatment that involves introdu uh, introducing genetic material into a person's cell to fight or prevent diseases. The workflow of gene therapy is to first create a genetic material, which is a kind of nucleic acid, such as therapeutic oligonucleotides, messenger RNA, DNA, etc. Then find the delivery approach, such as the uh, usage of plasmids, adeno-associated virus, lentivirus, or monoclonal antibody, etc., as delivery vehicle to deliver the gene into the cell to treat or cure disease by different mechanisms. The quality assurance of the genetic material and the delivery vehicle is essential for the product safety and efficacy in gene therapy industry. Adeno-associated virus, we call it AAV for short, is one of the most widely used gene delivery vehicle for gene therapy because of its non pathogenicity, low immunogenicity, and differential tropism to multiple cell types. It is a small exohedral virus, which is about 20 to 25 nanometers in size and with molecular weight of about 5.9 megadaltons. It is made of a shell of protein called capsid, packaging inside a single-stranded DNA of about 4.8 kilobases in size. The viral capsid is an 60-mer of three protein monomers, viral protein 1, viral protein 2, and viral protein 3. We call them VP1, VP2, and VP3 for short, which are 87 kilodaltons, 73 kilodaltons, and 61 kilodaltons in size, respectively. The uh, stoichiometry of viral protein 1 and 2 and 3 in the assembled capsid is about 1 to 1 to 10 in theory. The capsid of these viruses display multifunctional attributes and play important roles in the viral life cycle. Depending on the virus type, capsid viral proteins function in capsid and genome assembly for AAV manufacturing. For in vivo usage, capsid viral protein functions include um, reception binding, cell entry, intracellular trafficking, and genome release. So the purity analysis of the AOV capsid viral proteins is important for quality assurance and safety of AOV products. Traditionally, the purity of AOV capsid viral proteins has been analyzed using SDS page technology. 
It is useful for an initial estimate in the development lab. However, SDS page technology has very limited quantitation capability and therefore not robust enough to be used for quality control purposes. The reverse phase HPLC method has also been used sometimes for capsid viral protein purity assessment. However, it has limited resolution for reliable quantitation. As shown in the figure on the bottom right, the three viral protein peaks of AAV serotype B are not baseline resolved so that the quantitation of those peaks are not accurate. Besides, the retention order or the uh, evolution order of the three viral proteins might be inconsistent for different serotypes, which could introduce more work for the scientist to identify each viral protein peak in the chromatography. CSDS method uses capillary gel electrophoresis mode on a CE system, and it has been extensively used for years for the purity analysis and the quantitation of therapeutic proteins in biologics industry. It has proven advantages over conventional slab gel technology with high resolving power, better quantitation, excellent reproducibility, and automated operation, which is less labor intensive. It also provides higher resolution than HPLC for protein separation. The replaceable gel fields in the separation capillary serve as a molecular sieving matrix for size-based separation. For the sample preparation, the proteins are mixed with buffer containing SDS to form SDS protein complexes, which have similar charge density or mass to charge ratio. When these complexes are electrophoretically separated, their mobilities will depend on their hydrodynamic uh, sizes, with smaller proteins moving faster. The P100 Plus pharmaceutical analysis system is a capillary electrophoresis platform provides robust, reproducible, and automated analysis of biopharmaceuticals. It has a temperature control sample garage for enhanced sample stability and a liquid cooling capillary temperature control for migration time reproducibility. The convenient ready to use easy CE pre-assembled capillary cartridge ensures data consistency and ease of use. With the um, interchangeable PDA, UV, and leaf detector modules, it provides the flexibility to handle analysis using different detectors. Today, I will talk about two workflows for the purity analysis of AAV capsid viral proteins using CSDS technology on P100 Plus systems with different detector modules. The first one is using PDA or UV detector, which is suitable for a purity analysis of AAV products with titer greater than 1 times 10 to 13 GC per mil or lower titer but with sufficient sample volume. The second one uh, utilizes fluorescence dye for sample labeling and the laser-induced fluorescence leaf detector for sample detection, which provides ultra-high uh, sensitivity and could be used for purity analysis of AOB products with titer as low as 1 times 10 to 10 GC per mil and with limited sample amount. This slide shows the workflow using PDA detector. It's a one-step sample preparation, which could be done in less than 15 minutes. For samples with high salt concentration, um, which requires buffer exchange step, it will take longer, but still within one hour. A P100 plus pharmaceutical analysis CE system equipped with a PDA detector showed in figure A, a science SDS molecular weight kit in figure B, and easy pre-assembled capillary cartridge as shown in figure C were used for separation. Optimized sample preparation protocol and stacking injection methods were used for, um, to improve the sensitivity of the CSDS method by about 500 times, 
in order to meet the requirement of ALV analysis, which has a relatively much lower sample concentration and sample amount than regular analysis of therapeutic proteins, such as monoclonal antibodies. Here is a typical C separation electropherogram of eight injections of an AAV serotype 8 sample using PDA detector, which shows good baseline resolution of the three capsid proteins and excellent repeatability of peak profiles. We evaluated the methods for AAV samples at various starting concentrations. This figure demonstrates excellent peak peak uh, consistency over different sample concentrations. And the figure in this slide illustrates robust peak profile regarding to different sample pretreatments. The figure on the left used AAV8 sample at 1 times 10 to 13 GC per mil for sample preparation as it is. The figure in the middle used the same AAV8 sample with lower concentration, 1 times 10 to 12 GC per mil. The sample was concentrated to 1 times 10 to 13 GC per mil using Amicon Ultra 0 0.5 centrifugal filters with the 30 K Dalton cutoff. The figure on the right used the same AAV8 sample at 1 times 10 to 13 GC per mil, but in a buffer of high salt concentration. This sample was buffer is changed to a lower salt concentration. So these three samples went through different pretreatments, but finally they were at the same AAV concentration and in the same buffer before sample preparation. So after sample prep and the separation analysis on P100 plus according to the workflow described in a previous slide, the peak profiles of these three samples are consistent despite of the different sample pretreatment, and so are the uh, corrected peak error percentage of the three viral proteins. This sample preparation and the separation workflow was also um, applied to an AAV serotype 2 sample. This figure shows eight cons uh, consecutive injections of AAV2 sample at 1 times 10 to 13 GC per mil, which demonstrate excellent resolution and repeatability. Here is the summary of the repeatability test of this methodology. This table demonstrates excellent repeatability of this method by evaluating the relative standard deviation of corrected peak error percentage of three viral proteins of AAV2 and AAV8 samples at different titers. The calculation is based on eight consecutive injections of each sample solution. All the RSDs of corrected peak error percentage are less than 0.7%. Here is the linearity study. This method demonstrates excellent linearity of analyzing AAV8 samples from 5 times 10 to 11 GC per mil to 1 times 10 to 14 GC per mil by plotting the absorbance response of VP3 to the sample concentration or sample titers. The R square is 0 0.9991. So here is the summary for the first workflow, which utilizes CESDS technology with PDA detector for purity of assessment of AAV capsid viral proteins. It uses a straightforward and easy one step sample preparation procedure and it demonstrates excellent resolution, good repeatability, and linearity. This workflow is suitable to be used as a release and stability method to assess the uh, cap uh, capsid viral protein purity for quality control in gene and the cell therapy industry. As we just discussed, the CESDS method using PDA detector could provide good results for analysis of AAV sample with titer greater than 1 times 10 to 12 GC per mil. However, for analysis of some in-process AAV products, higher sensitivity is required. Since the uh, concentration of in-process AAV samples 
could be as low as one times 10 to 10 GC per mil and with very limited sample amounts. Fluorescence dye and the LIF detector could be used to further improve the sensitivity of CSDS methods. So the second workflow I'm going to talk about uses the uh, FQ dye as an, an example for the uh, sample labeling. This slide shows the workflow for AOV capsid viral protein analysis on P100 plus using LIF detector. The sample is denatured followed by the uh, FQ dye labeling. A P100 plus pharmaceutical analysis C system equipped with a laser induced fluorescence leaf detector with 488 nanometer uh, solid state laser an emission filter of 600 nanometer as uh, shown in the uh, figure one, and the replaceable gel and wash solution from the science SDS molecular weight kit in figure B and the uh, easy pre-assembled capillary cartridge in figure C we used for separation. Here is the typical electropharogram of an ALV8 sample at one time 10 to 13 GC per mil using CSDS LIF workflow. This is the comparison of PDA methods and LIF methods for capsid protein analysis of AAV8 sample at one time 10 to 13 GC per mil. Figure on the left is the EGRAM using FQ dye labeling and the LIF detector. Figure on the right is the EGRAM using PDA detector with sample preparation following the procedure in the first workflow. In order to make a fair comparison, the sample solution in left figure was buffer exchanged to the same sample buffer as the one in the right figure before loading into sample vial. So by comparing the two traces, the usage of FQ dye and the LIF detector improved the sensitivity of the CESDS method for AOV capsid purity analysis and provides better and flatter baseline. This figure shows the six consecutive injections of AOV8 sample with titer as low as one times 10 to 10 GC per mil. And this method was also uh, evaluated using AAV serotype 2 sample at different titers. And this figure shows the eight consecutive uh, injections of AAV2 AAV AAV sample at ultra low titer, one times 10 to 10 GC per mil. And this table demonstrates repeatability of this method by evaluating the uh, RSD of the corrected peak error percentage of three viral proteins of AAV2 and AAV8 samples at different titers. The RSD percentage are less than 5% at one time 10 to 12 GC per mil and one time 10 to 13 GC per mil. This method also demonstrates excellent linearity of AOV8 samples from one time 10 to 10 GC per mil to 1.6 times 10 to 14 GC per mil by plotting peak area of viral protein 3 to sample titers. The R square is 0 0.9989. So here is the summary for the second workflow. It demonstrates the capability of this CSDS LIF method for purity analysis of AOV viral proteins to as low as 1 times 10 to 10 GC per mil with easy sample preparation, excellent resolving power, good repeatability, and the linearity of absorbance response to sample concentration. This method is suitable for, cap, uh, cap, for capsid protein purity analysis of AV products with uh, ultra low titer and limited sample amount, especially for in-process products. So that's all for my uh, talk today. At last, I would like to thank my coworker, Sahana, Mukesh, Jane, Masha, and uh, Handy, and also my director, uh, Alex, from Science, who provide great help, help and uh, support for this project. 
and thank you very much for attending this webinar. And now I'm very happy to take your questions. Thank you, Ting Ting, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of our webinar. Now to our audience, if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we will an answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Okay, let's get started with our first question. Ting Ting, what is the small shoulder peak on VP3 peak in your CE electropherogram? Um, that's a very good question. The shoulder peak in front of the viral protein 3 peak could be observed in the um, electrophorograms of both AV serotype 2 and AV serotype 8 samples using PDA detector as well as using LIF detector. We mark this peak as deglycosylation form of viral protein 3 based on the uh, information of related uh, publications and the um, estimated molecular weight difference of these two peaks. So um, using the molecular weight size standard in the uh, SDS molecular weight kit, we could calculate the molecular weight difference of the viral protein 3 and its shoulder peak, which agrees with the uh, average molecular weight of um, glycans attached to capsid proteins stated in the publication. And um, besides, there are some uh, experimental ways which could be used to confirm the identification of the shoulder peak that uh, we haven't done it yet. Um, one is, the, uh, is to treat the sample with PNGSF enzyme to prepare the um, deglycosylated viral protein 3 and then uh, spike it into the sample to help identifying the shoulder peak. The other one is to uh, collect the fraction of the shoulder peak and identify it using mass, spec um, mass spectrometry. Hope this um, can answer this question. Thank you, Ting Ting. Now let's go with this question. For higher sensitivity analysis using LIF detector, may I use other fluorescence dyes? Uh, the answer is yes. Other fluorescence dyes, such as the tamara, pyrrolium dyes, et cetera, which could um, efficiently label the viral proteins with a reasonable quantum yield could be used for um, sensitivity improvement of the CESDS methods. But the sample preparation protocol and the uh, excitation wavelength, emission wavelength of the uh, ILF detector needs to be modified according to the property of the fluor fluorescence dye you choose. Um, besides, um, the labeling mechanism, uh, buffer components, the easy to use and the toxicity, post labeling cleanup requirement, etc., are the other factors to consider to choose an appropriate uh, dye for this assay. Thank you. Now we have time for one more question, and I do want to remind our audience that any questions we did not have time to get to today and those that are submitted during the on demand period will be answered by Ms. Lee via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. Okay, our final question. Ting Ti, does the workflow work on AAV of other serotypes? And do I need to modify the method for my other AAV samples? Um, the answer is yes. Um, this workflow, um, including the sample preparation protocol and the separation conditions, could be applied on AAV of other serotypes. Um, of course, um, minor changes might be needed. For example, um, due to various melting temperatures of different AAV capsids, the incubation temperature of the AAV capsid with the presence of SDS detergent for sample preparation need to be uh, optimized for fully denaturation of the capsid and the minimization of the degrading impurity generated. Um, besides, um, this method I presented today uh, were tested for samples in a couple of common, commonly used formulation buffers, but for the first time analysis of an AAV sample in different or uh, in a new um, formulation buffer, a buffer exchange procedure 
or an investigation experiment of the new buffer is recommended. Thank you, Qingqing. And thank you for your time today and for your important research. I would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, SciEx, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Now, before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us and for their interesting questions. Again, a final reminder that questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by Ching Ching Li via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand, and LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now, and we hope to see you again soon.